Hi, thanks for joining me. Um, I posted a photo of a larval worm that I use primarily for chronomid fishing, but it also is an exceptionally good San Juan worm when tied on larger hooks, and changing the hook style as well makes an exceptional San Juan worm. So I've been asked to show how the body is prepared. So I have this straw, it's kind of a corrugated straw, as you can tell it expands, it contracts, and I generally just push it all together and cut one end, the one end, and then the opposite end, then I split, while it's compressed, I split it down the center. I just, I'm using a pair of four and a half inch tungsten scissors, it's uh, probably about the best. So once it's split in half, then I'll go just get, rotate it 180 degrees and cut down the center again. So I have basically two sections. At this point, you can either trim it with a pair of scissors about an eighth of an inch in thickness. And I'll do that. And just carefully make your incisions or cuts along the edge of the tubing. So now I have section of tubing that's segmented cut out and I extend it at this point this now becomes my body so to try to tie this pattern I'll just start with uh, some 12 -0 nano silk and white uh, I prefer that because it, do, it does disappear um, if I choose it to being a white based material once it's lacquered or I can use Copic marker, which we'll use on this on this particular fly pattern quite a bit, to color up the segmentation on this uh, chromid larva or San Juan imitation. So first, I add in a little lateral scale flash in front of the hook, and just tie that in, tie it off, half hitch, and then. Uh, this will be, become our underbody. Rotary vise is handy you know, for work like this, but you can certainly hand over hand it. And I like coming down into the, well into the bend of the hook and then returning back up the hook shank to right behind the eye of the hook. Here, I'll, to tie off, I'll do one wrap over top of the material, one in front, one over top, one in front. I'll do that three times. Secure that. Throw in a half hitch. And then cut away the excess. So next, what I'll do is I'll decide what color pattern I want to tie, whether it's uh, yellow and olive, or brown and olive, brown and yellow, uh, orange and yellow, red or yellow, um, and the ribbing is the highlight of the of the highlight feature within the worm itself. So I'll just do a, a red and orange one here, or red and yellow. And you'll see a lot of the color blending as we move along in this pattern. So Copic marker on the nano silk. Now I'll take my section of plastic tubing that I've cut and we'll just tie that in at the eye of the hook. A few tight turns. Make sure this is all centered. And we'll come down into the next segment and then bring it down into the next segment. Bring it down into the next segment. Two wraps. Down. Two wraps. 
and so on until we come to the back of the bend of the hook. And with the corrugation in the material, it's easy to use that as a blueprint to follow this pattern. So once we're at the back of the bend, you can snip off the excess material, flatten that down with your finger and thumb a, a bit. And then again, two wraps, move forward. So this starts to thicken up the ribbing a bit. And we'll color up a little bit more thread. And up in behind the eye of the hook. At this point, a little wood finish. And just make sure it's all centered. Take your time at it. And I'll do a second set of knots. Pull that cuts the nano silk. Cuts the material where I want it to be cut. You can't get a fine. You can't get a pair of scissors in fine enough to make that cut. But here. We almost have a finished worm except for the coloring and the lacquering of the pattern. Uh, but what I do, if you noticed, you can see sometimes a little bit of the segmentation is it's, it's rigid and away from the hook. So what I'll do is I'll just burnish it in place by using uh, a, the roundness on my scissors. And this bends the material down and around the hook shank both sides. And burnishing is normally kept for uh, flosses and threads when you're building Atlantic salmon patterns. It's not something that you see commonly used by trout fishermen on their fly patterns, but it is a absolute and very important technique to, to understand and, and utilize. So now I, once again, now I've decided again, we're running a yellow, red, yellow, orange, red uh, pattern. So I'll take this R14 Light Rouge Copic marker and the Copic pens come with a flatter butt end or with a tip, a finer tip section. And for this, because the detail work isn't so isn't really fine, I can just run the butt section, and we'll run swipe down, a couple of nice swipes here, and as you can see, it's coloring up quite nice. But before it dries, what I'll do is I'll run my fingers down either side just to lighten up the tone. If I'm not happy with it, I'll just start over again. And there I have the color that I desire. So a lot of yellow, red, and orange in the pattern. And at this point I'll change the hook angle so that when I lacquer, I can utilize gravity on the drops of lacquer to work to my advantage. I'll put it in this angle, turn it upside down, and I start lacquering from underneath the pattern. And just draw the lacquer down. Try to keep this as thin a coat as possible. Sandlin worm style patterns or water worms that they generally imitate or coronamid larva are not overly thick. So we'll let that dry and then give it a second coat and it nicely rounds out the finish on 
on the worm or on the groundwork. If I flip it to the side, you can see the beautiful segmentation it's created, beautiful color pattern. Uh, the coloring actually helps create a lot of the segmentation. And on the underside, you have flash from the lateral scale material that I put in. Uh, so it's, it's a very easy to tie pattern, very delicate in coloring, uh, easy to work with and makes an exceptional coronamid larval pattern and or San Juan worms. So I tie this from a size 4 aught in the San Juan worms down to a size 2 on circle hooks or gamakatsu hooks. And on coronamid patterns I'll tie that either on a straight shanked hook um, like the Hens DL254s which is a standard nymph hook 2x strong uh, wire for the larger trout um, when you're coronamid fishing because they all hit this very very hard and I tie them from a size 8 down to a size 14. Uh, for smaller thinner patterns I just use other straws that are smaller and have the cor a, a smaller or a corrugation that's uh, a lot thinner in the ribbing edges so it just it'll work very well and very easily down to a size 14 hook and on the um, the larval patterns or the coronamid patterns, I'll generally run a Hens 600 or a Daiichi 1770 or 1870, which is the larval hook, or the 1770, which is the swimming nymph hook. The Hens 600 is a swimming nymph hook created by Hens um, and is an exceptional quality hook. So, hope this made sense and thank.